Shopify grows your business no matter how far or big you grow. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Whether you're selling your fans' next favorite shirt or an exclusive piece of podcast merch, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. Allbirds, Rothy's, Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash income, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash income now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Oh, Vern. It's me, Vern. I know you're in there listening to the Gen X Grown Up Podcast. Who? The Gen X Grown Up Podcast, man. If you're going to listen, you should support them on Patreon. Do what? GenXGrownUp.com slash Patreon. Show some support, man. They ain't here. I know they're not there, but you're listening to them. Come on, let me in. I want to be a fourth listener, too. No life, no fun. Don't you know that you're a grown up? Gen X Grown Up is a YouTube channel website and audio podcast you're listening to right now. All made for and by people who love exploring media, games, tech, and toys of yesterday and today through the eyes of Gen Xers who refuse to grow up. Your dinner cannot just be french fries. Welcome back, Gen X Grown Up Podcast listeners, to this episode 173 of the Gen X Grown Up Podcast. <laughs> I am John. Joining me, as always, of course, is George. Hey, man. Hey, how's it going, guys? You know that Mo is here. How's it going, Mo? Hey, everybody. In this episode, we head to the theater to see the third entry and prequel in the Quiet Place franchise. Check out a website that promises to help you stay on top of the overwhelming volume of media releases and delve into the library of the 80s Mattel console that once gave Atari a run for their money. Those topics and many more coming up in this episode. First, though, it's time for some fourth listener email. We know that there are three of us and most of us will listen. Not all, most of us will listen. Anybody else does. <laughs> That's the fourth listener. And this time around, it's Brandon G, longtime listener and supporter. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, and he drops us a line with the subject, Dangerous Toys. It is. That's yeah. really popular. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we got more mail Everybody likes their dangerous toys. <laughs> Still getting emails about yeah, that. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Brandon says, I love the Dangerous Toys episode and new yard darts would be mentioned. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I have a recollection of those darts myself. During a family gathering, my older brother and one of our cousins were playing yard darts and decided to throw them up in the air, as John mentioned in the episode. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> because why wouldn't you? But unlike John being pinned to the ground by a shoestring, my cousin caught one of the darts in the head. Ooh, he was one of the kids they <laughs> talked about. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Ouch. Oh, the dart lodged between his scalp and skull. Oh. Is, is that worse? I don't know. That sounds bad. <laughs> well, it's worse in your brain. Like yeah. maybe it, it went down the side or something. Yes, I'm, that's that's, guessing, that's right? what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah like, right. like a glancing blow. Mm. Oh. oh, he says one inch difference could have meant not getting hit at all or certain death. Wow. Dang. Mm. <laughs> that's yard darts, man. <laughs> mm. I wonder why they got canceled. Yeah. I laughed to myself a few days ago when I saw yard darts for sale at Walgreens because they are plastic and foam. Jeez, I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, personally, I just feel like they were a tool of evolution, right? Just weed out the people who can't figure them out and move on. <laughs> or the people who weren't quick enough to get out of the way when you threw them right. in the air. Exactly. <laughs> or the ones that were dumb enough to throw them straight up in the air. They'll get rid of those kids too, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> like me. <laughs> uh, he, he wraps it up saying, keep up the great work, guys, and best wishes to all three of you. Thank you, Brandon. We love awesome. it that you wrote in. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we appreciate it every time any of our fourth listeners take the time to write in and tell us what they think of the show or any memories that we uh, dredged up for you. If you would like your email featured here on the show, it is drop dead easy. Just hit us up at podcast at genxgrownup.com. You know, we read every single one of them and most of them will eventually make the show. All right, gents, with that good business behind us, let's jump into the body of episode 173 after this quick break. If you're an athlete, you know, the greatest motivator of all is the fear of letting your teammates down. After all, a team is only as good as its weakest link. 
So you owe it to those wearing the same jersey as you to be your best every time you step on the field. That's why there's no vape in team. When you vape, you can expose your lungs to toxic chemicals that can damage your lungs. If you're a step behind, the team's a step behind. Brought to you by The Real Cost and the FDA. You're listening to Gen X Grown Up. But if you have a friend who's not yet listening, why not? Tell them about us. They'll thank you later. Adventures of Ron Greenspan Volkswagen Subaru. I can't afford a new car. Save me, Ron Greenspan. With my low prices and great selection, I'll save you. Now, for a limited time, save more than ever during our spectacular end-of-the-year sale. All prices drastically cut, the lowest prices in our history. Ron Greenspan, Venice Avenue, San Francisco. Well, let's get the ball rolling, talking about media we've been checking out. Now you know this could be comics or books or movies or television or music or whatever you are enjoying. Uh, let's start with you, Mo. What have you yeah. been checking out? Oh, I saw the uh, release of the new movie, Quiet Place Day One. Mm-hmm. Ooh, the, the prequel, yeah. the the one that started all, I guess. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and to start with, I mean, everyone knows the basic premise behind this, right? I mean, everyone saw, I'm, I'm assuming everyone saw a Quiet Place. You know, there's basically monsters on the earth that if you make any sound, they can't see, but they could hear. And if you make any kind of sound that... They zero in on you and kill you, right? That's basically Mm -hmm. kind of what it comes down to. So the original movies, I think they took place like 10 months after this. I think it was like 10 months or less. It was like just less than a year after they came or something along those lines. It's not too long after, right? It had to be slightly under nine months because she was was pregnant. pregnant. That's right. And she gave birth. That's true. So yeah, so slightly. That makes sense. That makes perfect sense. After stepping on a nail, she gave birth. (laughs) Oh, don't talk about that scene. That scene still haunts me. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) But anyway, so this takes place literally day one. Life is going on as normal. Mm -hmm. These aliens literally fall from the sky and havoc happens right around the world. I really enjoyed this movie. Good. I had moderate expectations for it because I think it's a pretty good premise, just generally speaking. And I mm-hmm. said, okay, it could only be so bad, right? Um, yeah. But I think this movie was actually more about the characters than the monsters, which I think is mm-hmm. what made it a good movie. Yeah. The main actress in it, um, and I'm going to mispronounce her name so horribly right now, uh, Lupita Nyong'o. I think that's exactly right. She's from Black Panther. Yeah, so mm-hmm. Black That's Panther, where she got popular. Uh, amazing yeah. actress. She plays a terminally ill cancer patient who's in the middle of this. Mm, right. And really, she's like the focal of the whole story, obviously. I mean, she's like the main character. She's in New York City. Aliens happen. And she's just trying to, and I'm not going to give away too much, but she's trying to get home. Let's just leave it at that. Mm-hmm. And the story is about her, regardless of what's going on around her, that's her goal. Like, that's her journey that she's trying to get on. And yeah. along the way, she meets this guy, random guy, Joseph Quinn, who I was looking at and I said, he looks like somebody. I kept wondering who it was. Eddie from Stranger Things. Mm-hmm. Oh, is yeah. that who that was? Yeah. yeah. I couldn't place him either. <laughs> yeah, my son picked him out in the trailers right away. My oh, dad, really? My son was like, oh, Hellfire Club. <laughs> yeah. I saw, I'm looking at this guy and I'm like, one, he has a British accent. He's wearing a mm-hmm. suit. He's clean cut. I'm like, but damn, he doesn't look familiar. <laughs> and then when I, when I saw, then like it suddenly hit me. I'm like, holy crap. I'm like, he's a better actor than I thought. Cause holy, <laughs> you know, I was like, I could, I mean, his Eddie, his role as Eddie, it did not even place him anywhere near what this character was. But, Anyway, that's basically the premise of the movie. And I said, I think they did just a really good job of just balancing the the horror and everything else with it. I I love the Quiet Place franchise. So Mm -hmm. just to point out, we always we kind of gloss over this, but this is solely John Krasinski's creation. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, from the office and he's done uh, the Jack Ryan stuff since then, 13 mm-hmm. hour Benghazi mm-hmm. movie. He, he's a tremendous talent, his wife, Emily Blunt. But I don't know how much involvement he had in this third franchise of the film. He uh, wrote it. He wrote he, the first two. Did he, he write one this, of the writers one, as well? this one too. Yep. He's one of the writers. See, mm-hmm. I, I love it when a person who has that creative vision and execute it so well, because he even directed the first movie, maybe the second mm-hmm. one too. I can't remember. Mm-hmm. He gets to stay involved in it. And then you talked about Mo that you liked it because it was centered around the characters. That's what the first two movies yeah. were all about. Oh, yeah. It wasn't mm-hmm. about the aliens. It wasn't about Jaws, the shark. It was yeah. about the characters in their daily lives and the terrible guilt they felt because the one child had mm-hmm. remember he turned oh, on geez. the little space shuttle thing on the bridge on the way back home yeah. in that mm-hmm. first few scenes and got killed and everything. I love 
this franchise. I think it's one of my favorite horror franchises. Now that it's got a third film, I'm going to call it a franchise. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's tremendous. I love that we're getting great stuff in a modern day environment. Cause it's been so long that you don't necessarily get something that's really great in that genre. And the quiet place franchises, it's been awesome so far. I'm glad you got to see it. I can't wait to see it when it comes yeah. on streaming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I enjoyed it as well. I'll say the only thing maybe I didn't enjoy about it is that it's a prequel. Mm -hmm. So it's day one. We get to see the aliens appear. And I was looking forward to seeing how they figure out the monsters can hear you but not see. Oh, right. Yeah, they kind of gloss over Mm. that big time. And what kind of happens is the primary character is knocked out during an explosion. And when she wakes up, there's helicopters going, don't make a sound. Don't make a sound. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. well, they figured it out while she was asleep. And now we're not going to get to see that. And we're never going to go back and see that again. Probably. Like I right. wanted to see some people in a lab going like, well, this is very strange how they react. So I guess maybe the idea is, as you said, Mo, they don't care about all that. The yeah, monsters right. are the monsters. Let's just focus on the characters, which they did, I guess. That mm-hmm. would have taken another 10, 15 minutes of exposition. But like, I like seeing people figure out the rules of the world and the monsters. And I thought I would get to see that, but that's kind of not present. It just happens off screen. Yeah, for sure. I like the fact that he didn't try to explain too much, though, because that seems to yeah. always ruin a mo- ruin these things. Like, when they try to explain like <laughs> why this happens, why that happens, you know, because the explanations are never satisfying, right? They're usually pretty stupid stupid most of the time <laughs> that's fair and, yeah. and so in this case the fact that they kind of like the only thing i would say my biggest thing is like and again maybe this is my i'm cold-hearted in some ways the person has a cat that cat would have been gone <laughs> immediately <laughs> you know i'm sorry well, i'm like i would not risk my support life cat. for a cat you know i don't care yeah. how attached i was to that cat i'm sorry you're a cat <laughs> you probably have a better chance surviving than me so you go do your thing and then i'll just <laughs> i'm killing the cat and carrying it with me for food sources later <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i mean <laughs> Dang. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, Quiet Place Day One, I, definitely worth seeing. Uh, if mm-hmm. you like the franchise, I think you'll really enjoy this movie. Again, it's about the characters, and I really felt for them and what they were going through, which, again, made it a, a really meaningful movie to me. So I mm-hmm. think it's definitely worth watching. Uh, so that's what I have. So how about you, George? What do you got for us this time? Yeah, I, I have an anime out of Japan oh. uh, that my son introduced me to. Now, this anime is a couple of years old. It came out in 2022. But... Uh, we started watching it at the end of our day after my wife would go to bed, just the two of us. It's They're like 20 minute, 23 minute episodes. Mm-hmm. It's called Chainsaw Man. Now you get to see it in this country on Crunchyroll. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, how to describe this? I'm, I'm, I'm thinking Chainsaw attached to a hand. That's what's in my head right now, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of them. Oh, Ooh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm, so, I'm watching this. This is every teenage boy's drool fest fantasy. Mm -hmm. So Chainsaw Man takes place in an environment in a world where devils, as they call them, are these creatures who roam the world trying to kill humans and get more powerful from the fear that humans have. So if a human has a fear of guns, there is a gun devil If a human has a fear of dying from leeches, there is a leech devil, (laughs) so on and so forth. And they are as dramatically drawn as you might imagine right now Mm. in your head. And the more people that have that fear, the larger and more powerful that demon gets. Okay. So right now in the, in the season that I'm watching season one, the gun devil is the most powerful devil that all of the devil hunters. And there are government bureaus of devil hunters plus private devil hunters. They are trying to kill the gun devil because he's the most dangerous. And therefore, like if you kill him, you get the most reward money and all of okay, that kind of gotcha. stuff. Okay. Not to hmm. mention he has wreaked havoc. There's a, in one of the episodes we recently watched, he killed like 1.5 million people in three minutes or something like that. Holy Just like crap. crap. Totally devastating devil. Now the character chainsaw man, he is this young, poor guy, like so poor, like he eats out of trash cans and mm. you know, he's the dregs of society. Everybody shuns him and everything. He has no parents and everything. Uh, he's like 16 years old. He has adopted this small little cute devil that looks like a cross <laughs> between um, a Pokemon and a chainsaw. 
at one scene, he gets lured into a trap by another devil and by this guy who has him hunting devils. In that scene, the devil that he's trying to attack kills him, but his little pet devil saves him and resurrects him by entering into his chest and heart. Ugh. And he is now combined with his little pet chainsaw Pokemon devil. So he's part <laughs> man, part devil. He's part man, part devil, which is very oh. rare in the world, of course. <laughs> oh, naturally. He has this little rip cord out of his chest that he can yank to activate <laughs> his chainsaw powers. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, he did say it was anime. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. is anime. It is very anime. Like, they don't pull any punches with this thing. It is crazily drawn. The chainsaws, Mo was right. One comes out of one arm. Oh. Another one comes out of the other arm, and oh. one comes directly out of his face. Oh, whoa. So his head has a big, giant chainsaw. His arms have chainsaws. Of course, they exact a toll on him when he activates his powers. He loses blood, and the more blood he loses, the weaker the chainsaws get. So he has to keep slashing and killing and drinking blood of whatever he's trying to kill oh. in order to keep his power strong. Oh, oh my god <laughs> and i guess if you're looking for blood chainsaw i mean come on can't you know. he is right <laughs> well he gets recruited by the local government uh devil hunter agency and it's they basically make him a servant like listen you're a devil so either you work with us or we're going to kill mm -hmm. you. Gotcha. Like to hunt other devils. Is that the exactly. idea? Exactly. And yeah. he's fine with that because he was hunting devils before. Sure. But he's yeah. also 16 years old. All right. And okay. he has some wants and desires that you might imagine a homeless, poor 16 year old boy would have. Okay. He's never had a place to sleep. Now he does. He lives with one of the devil hunters from the agency who actually doesn't like him. He gets food that he likes for the first time. There's one scene where like for three minutes, he's just talking about how he he's made the best bread ever by putting butter and jam and jelly and all this stuff on okay. top of it. And he's yeah. just like fanatical about it. But then 16 year old boy kicks in and he has a goal in his life. And that's mm -hmm. to, I'm uh -oh. not making this up, touch boobies. <laughs> and he literally says it like that. Okay. Sure. Not with the chainsaws. So, not with the right? chainsaws, like, right? <laughs> No, not with the chainsaws. <laughs> One of the people he's working with in the agency, she promises him if he does this thing, she'll let him squeeze her boobs. <laughs> it's, it's really a cheap payment, honestly. <laughs> no, in true Japanese anime fashion, they actually pay it off in the show. It's not like something that happens off screen or never happens at all. The poor kid gets to squeeze boobs. I was rolling on the floor laughing. <laughs> it is so funny. If you want outlandish anime, this is mm. by far my favorite series right now. I <laughs> just found out that season two is coming out this year, which we mm. were worried about because it wasn't well received in Japan, but apparently it was well received enough everywhere else on Crunchyroll mm. that they yeah. decided to do a season two. So okay. wow. Chainsaw Man huh. on Crunchyroll. <laughs> boobs and chainsaws go check it out yeah I, I got nothing okay i'm gonna just go watch it <laughs> <laughs> what else can you say <laughs> it's crazy john yeah <laughs> i'm guessing that yours doesn't involve a 16 year old boy wanting to touch boobs hmm not that I recall. It might have been in the movie. I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> so the I went and saw the fourth entry in the uh, the Bad Boys franchise, oh. which mm. is inexplicably not named Bad Boys 4, the number four life. Totally missed opportunity. It's instead right. called Bad Boys Ride or Die. Uh. The new entry in the... Yeah. And um, the, the bottom line is it's another Bad Boys movie. If you like the other ones, you'll like this one. It's uh, Will Smith and Martin Lawrence doing the buddy thing, which they do mm -hmm. so well together uh, with Mike and Marcus as their characters. Something horrible. Is that, well, you know, in the last one that the chief died by right. played by Joe oh, Pantoliano. Right. He passed yeah. away. He's in this movie, though, in video sequence and this is in flashbacks and stuff. Uh, the premise of this movie is the dirty cops in in the, the department have decided to frame him for all the bad stuff they've been doing. And Mike and Marcus are not having it. Right. They're like, okay. you are not putting all this on this guy. We know this guy intimately. He was not dirty. And it's, you know, it's one of those things that's that, that you like seeing somebody stick up for somebody, even who's died. Like, sure. he almost got in trouble. Like, you know, he got into a fist yeah. fight almost. You're not going to smir besmirch his name. Interestingly, if you like the previous Bad Boys movies, this is almost a role reversal because previously, uh, Will Smith played Mike, who was the gung ho guy, and Martin right. Lawrence, who played Marcus, was kind of like 
shy and, and afraid and timid. Yes. In this case, the beginning of the movie, uh, this is all in the first five, 10 minutes. I'm not giving anything away here. Micah gets married. And so now he has a wife. So he's very cautious. He doesn't want anything to happen. So he's the one who's more cautious. And Marcus has a near death experience where he has some visions and he's like, I'm invincible. I can't die. So now he's the one who's all gung ho and doing crazy <laughs> uh, things. Yeah. So it's a bit of a role reversal in, in that way. The thing I like most about all of these movies is I heard somebody talking about these films in general and also just friends in, in general. It's like there are three kinds of friends you can have that you call at two in the morning. One of them pretends he didn't see you call. The next one picks up the phone, but he's frustrated that you called him at two in the morning. The third kind answers the phone and you can hear him putting on his pants as he says hello. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> you know, whatever it is, I'm there for you. Doesn't matter. That's what you get out of these. It's that the closeness of these guys is the thing that drives these films. Uh, yeah, there's gunplay and there's shooting and there's great effects and <laughs> stuff like that. For me, though, it's seeing these close, genuine feeling male friendships that pull these stories through for me. And, and this has that same thing. So you went and watched this movie. It sounds like you enjoyed it, which mm -hmm. I'm happy for you yeah. because I always <laughs> love it when people enjoy a movie. But how much of this film or how much do you feel they were trying to rehab Will Smith's image from the horrible <laughs> controversy with him and Chris Rock a few yeah. years ago where he slapped yeah. him in the mouth? Yeah. I mean, Hollywood and everyone had pretty much written him off. I'm yep. imagining that both he and Martin Lawrence probably were main producers of this film because, you know, mm -hmm. they got plenty Makes of money sense. and it may have been the only way that Will Smith got another movie to try and rehab his image because yeah. nobody wanted to touch him with a 10 foot pole. Do you think any of that was shown in the movie that might have watered it down a little bit, like it was just a, a PR project for Will Smith or, you know, because Martin Lawrence really doesn't get to do anything anymore except for these bad boy <laughs> movies. It feels like I'd never see him in anything. Uh, it's a really good question. It was something that was certainly in the back of my head because like so many people, it, it's not as if Will Smith did something illegal. It's not like he robbed someone or killed someone or whatever, but he did something right. that was, it was assault and it was, yeah. he lost his cool. And I know like many people, it brought him down a few notches in what I think of him as a person. And that's going to affect when you watch someone on screen. I try to set that aside. I always try to separate the person from the art when I can, when I can rationalize it myself. Um, they didn't ignore it. I'll tell you, there, there is a scene in the movie where Will Smith gets smacked repeatedly. And it was the most mm. laughs I heard in the theater the whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Because they're trying to come to your senses, smack. No, I'm okay now. So he gets popped in the job four or five times by Martin Lawrence at this one point. And there's no mistaking that as a, look, here is us trying to bring in what you know about Will Smith smacking people. And then we're going to, he's going to happen to him in the film. So in a meta kind of way, it was addressed, but it didn't, I was never able to set it aside in my brain. It was still there. Despite that, the movie on its own merits is enjoyable. It's going to come down to whether or not you can palette Will Smith at this time in, in your life and his life after knowing that he's kind of a jerk and, you know, right. he's not just Fresh Prince, right? <laughs> he's, yeah. he's a guy who's has his own demons and stuff. And yeah, it, it was part of it for sure, but worth seeing as well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when it comes on streaming, definitely check it out. It's not something you should miss unless you just hate Will Smith at this point, I guess is what I'm saying. <laughs> You've got questions. We've got answers. Business leadership, ownership, and sales can be challenging. Tune into the Accelerate Your Business Growth podcast to learn from the world's experts. Join me, your host, Diane Helbig, as I chat with people who have expertise in various areas of business. You'll enjoy the lively conversations that are focused on providing you with the ideas, tips, and suggestions you need to realize greater success. Get what you need for your business when you need it from the people who have the answers. Accelerate Your Business Growth is part of the Evergreen Podcast Network and is available on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Be sure to subscribe to or follow Gen X Grown Up wherever you listen. And while you're there, rate and review the show, too. It helps more than you know. Heath introduces a new soft and crunchy candy bar. It's soft. It's crunchy. Toffee Tidbits covered with real milk chocolate. It's Heath's new soft and crunchy. For midday snack, you can't beat a Heath. Heath's new soft and crunchy. You can't beat a Heath. 
So for this tech and toys, I have something. I don't know if it's a toy. It's not really tech. I don't know, but it's interesting. <laughs> okay. Because it's something I never would have thought I'd ever buy in my life, but I got Ooh, one now. Okay. Which is a propane gas grill. <laughs> so I know it's it's, it's so radical. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird for me because, again, like I grew up in New York where nobody had one. Obviously, we all lived in apartments, so nobody had a grill. I didn't okay. know grilling was a thing except you did them in the park, you know, with charcoal. Mm-hmm. And that was it for pic- family picnic kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So Amy's like, you know, we have to get one because, one, we had to get a really large one, which we wind up getting. It has like five burners on it. I think it's massive uh, mm-hmm. because between the two of us, we have way too many children and grandchildren. But I, I guess my question to you is not so much about the burner, which I'll throw a link to people curious what it is I bought. But to either you two, is this something you normally like grew up with and is normal? Because this isn't like a normal thing for me, <laughs> to be quite honest. <laughs> I mean, I'll jump in with that. Yes, we always had a grill of some kind at our mm-hmm. house. Now, I don't think I ever had a gas grill until I became an adult and bought one for myself. And I bought the gas because of the convenience over the charcoal, which is mm-hmm. a little bit more, you know, troublesome to get started. Yeah, clean and, and all that stuff too, right? The temperature control on a gas grill is obviously much easier than a charcoal grill. You have to know what you're really doing with briquettes and wait for them to burn to the proper thing. Because so many people, my father included when I was a kid, you throw the briquettes on there, you light them up with a lighter fluid, and you immediately put your meat or whatever on the grill <laughs> instead of waiting for the Yeah, that's not the way to do it. To, <laughs> yeah. Um, but we definitely have one. That's a fire. I just recently <laughs> threw out our old five burner propane gas grill because I was cleaning off the back porch where we had it Mm -hmm. and I haven't replaced it since I just looked at the link that you put, which is on Walmart. It's like two fifty. What surprises me the most is because that one looks very similar to the one I had. They really haven't gone up that much in price in the 15 years since I bought mine because that's about how much mine cost back then. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I think mine was like $199. So I I I thought it was was cheaper than I expected it to be, quite honest. But Mm -hmm. yeah, especially you're buying it in summer. That's usually when their prices are the highest on those. Oh, okay. Yeah, grill's pretty standard thing in the South, I think, in general, because it's Mm -hmm. always good weather. It's never mm. freezing outside. You have to worry about just snowing out your grill, right? No, it's, it's just the rain. Be... That's all you worry about. Yeah, that's it, really. And I've had both. We've had uh, charcoal. As, and as George said, you don't just light it and put the stuff on there. You have to let, <laughs> right. You're supposed to let them get white hot. And then now it's even heat. And everything. Anyway, but uh, <laughs> and then there's a thing where you may not know doing a propane grill. You get the uh, the the different wood chips in there mm-hmm. to get a different smoky yep. flavor. It imbues the meat with different kinds of uh, mm. tastes of, of yep. oak or, or I don't know what other cedar. I don't know cedar doesn't whatever whatever wood chip yeah. you put in there. <laughs> pine, no, don't do whatever. that. Whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever different kind of chips, and then a propane grill. The benefit is that you can do like George was saying. You can just strike it, turn it on, and it's just it's like being inside cooking. A propane grill yeah. is just an oven, you know, it's just <laughs> a stove top rather. <laughs> Is you know it has a fuel source and it's immediately hot for you. And I looked at your fancy one here, and it th- this could be inside of a kitchen, but for the it doesn't have good ventilation. It's had all kinds <laughs> yeah, of burners in the center cooking thing. Yeah, you could make a lot of stuff with it. But have you started using it yet? Have you used? Uh, it we're actually, you break her, all her kids are here for the Fourth of July weekend, which is when we're recording this. Sure. And uh, so we're I got ribs, I got chicken, I got all the meats that we're going to be breaking this sucker in on. Um, so all right, <laughs> I, I have very limited experience with this, so we'll see how it goes. Could go horribly, horribly wrong, but you know, that's why the YouTube's here. I'm going to give you one piece of gas grill advice, Mike. Please. You go to start the thing, mm-hmm. usually you have a button to press or you have to press in on the knobs, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. If you do that and you don't hear the little ignition switch clicking <laughs> like yeah. you might in a car, mm-hmm. look for a place where a AA battery is stored. Really? Because what That's most people forget about is those little things. They have to have some kind of power. The igniter. Yeah. Right. To get the igniter going with the little arc. And at least on the one that I had most recently, the mm. button itself that you pressed, if you unscrewed the cover, there was a double A battery in there. Mm. And like for a week, my wife was so mad. She was like, we're going to throw this grill out and everything. It's not starting anymore. I don't know what I can't cook my fish. And then I went and looked at it and I was like, there's got to be an electrical source for this thing. It's not plugged in, obviously. Mm-hmm. Let me start pulling it. And I pulled on that cover and there it was. 
So I'll be dead because I was actually wondering about that because I'm like, you know, you just turn a knob like a, like part way and you hit a click and yep. click and it ignites. I'm like, mm-hmm. how does that work? <laughs> I'm, yeah. in my head, I'm like, this is like magic because, mm-hmm. you know, there needs something <laughs> in here to like make this happen and just turning your switches work. OK, well, cool. All right. Well, OK, cool. Mm-hmm. Like that, I'll let you know how this goes. You know, as I said, this go horribly, horribly wrong, but maybe not. Good I'll luck. Let you know. <laughs> so, OK, so on that note, let's move to you, John. What do you got for us? You know, so this is something, again, I've notoriously been doing general household things. We did the stickers on the mm-hmm. stove and things like that. The but, alarm for your freezer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. When I first moved into this house, one of the things that I wanted to do was put in timer switches on some, not like on main light lights, but lights that you typically leave on longer than you should. Like uh, we have a light in the closet, you know, a light over the sink, a light in the garage, things that you notoriously leave on a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I ended up just doing a couple of them because when I first did that, those switches cost like $35 a piece. They were very expensive Whoa. for all the electronics in them. Uh, so I never really thought about it. We took care of the ones we mainly needed, but I had one stop working on me a couple of weeks ago. So I'm like, well, I guess I got to replace it with something. You got to be a regular switch or whatever. It literally, I would turn it on and I had about five seconds for it would go off. And it was the one of my mm. sink. So I'm brushing my teeth and it would go light, dark, light, dark. I had to keep pushing <laughs> the button. Something just cooked in it. So I went looking and th- the main takeaway really that I want to talk about was these things have gotten really cheap over the years. I guess as they more, more people use them, you know, it's a supply and demand thing. 18 bucks for these timer switches that I got. Oh, okay. uh, so they've dropped by almost half. Uh, the one I got was, you get different ones, they, they behave differently. I got one that was anywhere from, I think, a minute to 30 minutes. I was like 1, 5, 10, 15, 20, whatever. You just push one button and the light will stay on for that long and turn itself off. This particular one that I'll give you a link to that I that I found, Mo, I'll tell you something great about it and something to be cautious about as well that I found. One thing that's great about it is that once you set a time that you like, there's a big button on it. So you don't have to read the timer. You just smack that button and it will redo the last button that it pushed. So okay. if you typically want this light on for 10 minutes, you click the, that activate. And every time you push the big button on it, it'll just do the 10 minute. Okay. Also, you can long press it to leave it on forever. So bypassing the timer so okay. more okay. than three seconds, it is like a double beep. But the thing I'll warn you of is everything has LEDs these days. Yes. And maybe they meant for these LEDs to serve as a nightlight. I don't know that they meant for them to illuminate the room at night. Oh, really? (laughs) These little (laughs) LEDs are, they're blue (laughs) and they're blindingly bright to the point that these switches are in my bathroom and I have to close the door between my bathroom and bedroom at night (laughs) or it's just way too bright for the tiny little LEDs in these switches. Uh, You can find one that doesn't have those bright lights probably, but (laughs) those are ones I have now. So, so, I when you were talking about that, number one, I went and looked at your link real quick. Mm-hmm. I would be very unhappy with this in my bathroom only because I saw everything and the big button that you're talking about. I like that at least you can turn it on forever because I go to take a shower. I'm in there for longer than 30 minutes and mm. I don't want the shower. I'd be inside the shower. I'm not going to reach out and press an electrical <laughs> button <Yeah. laughs> you know, to keep my light on. Yeah. But those LEDs that you talk about, one thing I'll caution you to keep an eye on is your bill for your electricity now, because I've watched a lot of YouTube videos Ooh. where people are talking about these LEDs that are on. They're constantly drawing power to power that LED, mm-hmm. and it's eating up a lot more energy than people realize. And so people's Ooh. electrical bills on devices like um, little mini PCs, like mm-hmm. the Pico Pies and things mm-hmm. like that, if they have these LEDs and they just leave them plugged in, people's electrical bills are going up by $10, 20 $30 a month Ooh. Sometimes I'll keep an eye on the location. I installed so two of them. If yeah. you have several of them, it can yeah. it can add up. Oh, yeah. interesting. And on that point, George, I'll mention that these timers you can get different durations. You can get ones that go from you know ten minutes to four hours or something. They don't all mm. go up to thirty minutes. There are different variations. So this is actually very timely because I have a pantry. The light is never mm-hmm. off on it. You know, because no one remembers exactly. to turn it off. You know, so yep. so I'm definitely looking at like, oh, maybe I could you know do this one. Um, mm-hmm. but this reminds it's kind of funny because at my job, you know, in you know big off i work in an office and they have the bathrooms and they have the the motion lights in the bathrooms mm-hmm. you know like oh yeah and <laughs> I, I usually get into work early i got in early walked in the light came on you know like it yeah. does when you walk in then i hear the toilet flush <laughs> <laughs> Somebody was in there in the dark. So I'm like, so I'll sit there. I'm like, somebody must have been sitting here in the dark mm-hmm. for God. Because and the light does it. It's definitely longer than five minutes that this thing, you know, stays on. And yeah. poor person, maybe he's just having stomach issues that day. I don't know what the problem was, but I'm like, <laughs> I, I, I question whether to stay in there and see who it was, or just give the person some dignity and leave. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I did walk out, let the person have their dignity. Aww, I have no idea who it nice is. 
but it's just funny because that's just when you said timer light, that's the first thing that popped in my head. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, George, what have you been looking at in tech? Well, uh, oddly enough, I'm not going old man grill or light switch route <laughs> today. So I'm hoping to give our listeners a little something more in tune with Thank what you. we do in our podcast. And I found a website recently out of pure necessity more than anything else. So when we do these podcasts for you guys, every couple of weeks, we do this regular episode. One of the things that we like to do at the end is tell you about stuff we're looking forward to. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about John or Mo, but I don't often find stuff before it's already out. Like I find it out after it's two or three episodes in, if it's a TV show or the movie (laughs) already came out on some service or the video game's been out for a year, that kind of a thing. So it's always difficult for me when I'm planning out my looking forward to's I have to go to like 20 different sources on the web (laughs) to see what movies are coming out on Netflix or what's coming out on Apple TV or what's coming out in the theaters or are there any video games that are coming out because they're constantly Mm -hmm. stuff that I'm missing all the time Mm -hmm, and there's just mm -hmm. places that do an okay job of this one thing or that one thing or these two things combined but nobody i've found so far has done it all the way around on all the media sources that i would be interested in correctly or well until i found releases.com and it is Mm -hmm. plural So be careful with that because who knows what porn site it might send you to. I don't know what release.com might be, but oh my goodness. (laughs) Full release.com. Try that one. (laughs) (laughs) But releases.coms specifically covers games, movies, and TV series and more. They actually have a section that said TVs. And I'm like, oh, TV series. No, it's televisions that are being released, like Like new manufactured TVs that are being released. This website has everything. It's very easy to understand. They have stuff broken down by categories, of course, uh, even like on the television side. So it's regular TV. Then they have an Apple list or they have a Netflix or an Amazon Prime. But they also have a everything TV list. They have an everything all list. So movies, TV shows, video games, everything is all on one Mm. list. Mm -hmm. They're really well organized. The graphics are easy to follow. They have dates on every single icon of the thing you're looking at, which I love. It starts with the current time frame that you're in based on your computer's clock. So if you log on to it on July 4th, when we're recording this episode, the very first thing at the top is July 4th, not July 1st or Mm -hmm. June 30th that some of these other websites Mm -hmm. accidentally take you to, which always frustrates me because I'm like, okay, I need to get down to what's coming out in a, Mm -hmm. you know, now the future, the the next window. Right. Yeah. 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 It's really well set up. I built my entire looking forward to list in today's episode that I'll get to later off Mm -hmm. of the website today. And it took me less than three minutes. It was Mm. easy to scroll, easy to find. Uh, You can also search for things like I talked about Chainsaw Man being having a second season coming out this year. That's because I just typed in Chainsaw Man in their search bar and they had all the details for Mm. it. So it's a really useful website if you are trying to find out what's coming up soon and you don't know where to go look. Just a one-stop shop that's really well curated and put together. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome because I I have to go to like the three or four different places like TV, movie, mm-hmm. and, and all that stuff, which is a pain in the ass. Because also they some make you scroll through the entire year just to figure out mm-hmm. where the heck you are. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's pretty handy. I'm definitely gonna be using this yeah. one. Yeah, you mentioned that to me the other day, George, and I've already bookmarked it. Yeah, <laughs> it's already yeah. Because often I'll know one or two things, but you're like, well, mm-hmm. I like to have you know the three things that we can talk about that are of interest. And sometimes I go, well, what I don't even know what's coming soon. Yeah, and it's not like I pick something I wasn't interested in it's that i mm-hmm. forgot it was coming i'm like oh <laughs> that thing of course and it's yeah, all right. in one place yeah exactly yeah. and yeah. that's i love it i think the one that impressed me the most because i've i've never found a website that has done a good job of this is the pc or sorry not the pc but just the video game oh, list yeah. because mm-hmm. it breaks those down into category pc game xbox playstation Platforms. nintendo yep. switch mm-hmm. it breaks them down into categories so if you only have a nintendo switch and that's the only way you play games you can look at just that list there you go. but if you have multiple devices you can look at the everything game list if you like and yeah it's just really well curated really well put together i can't say for sure if they've got everything listed because i don't mm-hmm. have no idea what yeah. everything is but they <laughs> have <know>. a lot <laughs> exactly yeah so releases.com 
good nice. website if you want to find out what's coming out next. Greetings from Evergreen Podcasts. We're rolling out a listener survey and we want to hear from you. The information in the survey will help us gather statistics and in turn make our shows more appealing to advertisers. I know most people don't like ads, but this is one of the only ways our shows make money and help keep their lights on. We promise it will only take a few minutes, but the impact on our podcasts will be tremendous. As a token of our appreciation, we'll randomly select one lucky participant each month to win an exclusive merchandise package from Evergreen Podcasts. Head to evergreenpodcast.com slash listener survey to help a show and possibly get some free stuff for doing so. We can't thank you enough for the support. Now back to the show. Each episode of Gen X Grown Up has show notes loaded with links where you can learn more about our topics. And there's even more to see and hear over at GenXGrownUp.com. Well, this is the week when the best and worst dressed celebrities are unveiled by people. People celebrates people. But this week, some celebrities won't celebrate. Who's the most chic? Who isn't chic at all? And how they shop till they drop. It's all in this week's People, along with some fond goodbyes to the great Orson. And why is Nancy's dog on? Every week, People's a celebration of the people you'll be talking about next. Week after week, People celebrates people. This week, the best and even better, the worst dressed. This is the main event of the podcast for the three in attendance locally and the millions listening around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time! All right, time to talk about games. Hmm. I don't think any of the ones we're talking about are new games that were found on releases.com in this thing. No. I think most of these things are pretty old. <laughs> Not recently. Yeah. Uh, John, I am 100% convinced that the thing you want to talk about is extremely old. Yeah, you're not wrong. 40 years old, in fact. Ooh. Oh, jeez. Now, I know that none of us had an Intellivision console back in the day. Mm -hmm. We all had Ataris, but we were aware of Mattel mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. their Intellivision console. They had George Plimpton on there pimping out the thing, how much better it was, the graphics right. and everything. But as we've said many times, for us, it was like, today you can get, oh, I have a Switch and an Xbox and a PlayStation to play what I want. Back then, as we were kids, our parents looked at that like a toaster. Like, you have a toaster. Well, there's the, in television. No, you already have a game system. You don't get a second game system. So once you had one, you had it. Uh, and I know for a long time, George, you've been fascinated with the Intellivision, wanted to explore mm -hmm. the library and see stuff. I never spent any time really paying attention to it. But lo and behold, a few weeks ago, when Atari acquired the bulk of Intellivision, I'm like, why did they grab all this stuff? And now I want to know. And so my attention has been divided between the stuff I normally am looking at and now exploring the Intellivision library of games. Mm -hmm. So what's interesting about this is, look, we all had Atari games. We've all played hundreds of Atari games. There are still ones we've not seen maybe or heard of, but sure. we're not, you're not going to launch an Atari game and go, holy crap, it looks like this. You know what an Atari game looks like. Right. You know how it plays and sounds. Sure. And I was always under the impression the Intellivision was much more complex and super capable and much better. Here's what I've learned that probably should have been something I knew all along, but the Intellivision console is not the second coming of video games. It has its strengths and weaknesses above mm -hmm. and beyond the Atari. Mm -hmm. But as and it was, it had more inputs. It had that keypad. So you had more buttons right. you could push. But the design of the game from the 80s and the overall complexity of the game from the 80s and the aesthetic of these games on that platform, it's like just playing Atari from another parallel universe. It's the same feeling, but it's, it's, it's as if somebody said, hey, there's another 800 games for Atari you never played. Here they are. But they were for in television. It's another set of titles. And it's amazing how some games were better on the Atari. Some games were better on the Intellivision. Right. But they're all new and they're all different. And I'm finding that as I will just go down the list and go, let's see what this game is. And then suddenly I fall in love with it like it was a game that I bought from Babbage's with my allowance 40 years ago and brought home <laughs> and found out it was awesome. It's it's I can't tell you how how awesome it feels to have that experience again, exploring a platform that I had previously dismissed. So, you know, Mo and George and everyone listening to, if you have that experience of 
like we do with the Intellivision. It's staggering how interesting they are and how similar they are to what you remember on whatever console you had, not because of the hardware, but because of the time they were built in, the programming, what was the mentality, what was game design like back then? I think for me, I've always thought in my head, and you're right, John, I didn't have an Intellivision. I wanted one desperately mm-hmm. because yep. I had an Atari, but you want the thing you don't have, of, of course. course. And I know ColecoVision came out a little bit later than the other two, and Mm -hmm. its graphics are certainly, in my opinion, much better better. than those two. But I think for the Intellivision versus the Atari, I kind of have the same comparison in today's modern gaming landscape between the Xbox and the PlayStation. Both of them are awesome, and people love playing games on them, but there's not one that's so far and above the other, Mm -hmm. right? They On their on their same generation levels, they provide pretty similar graphics, pretty similar yep. gameplay. Mm-hmm. One, you press some X's and squares and triangles and circles. <laughs> and the other one, you press A, B, X, Y. Yeah. But for the most part, things are very similar. And it's just whatever platform you adopted first based on whatever was available or your parents bought for you or whatever peer pressure thing caused you to buy the PlayStation or the Xbox. Mm-hmm. That's how I felt about Intellivision Atari from back in the day. I just jonesed for it so much all the way up until my adulthood because I didn't have one. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, you know, I've got one now. I don't plug it up regularly to play on it physically. Mm -hmm. I don't emulate in television very much because I've always been fearful of that game pad. And in emulation, I don't know how it's supposed to (laughs) work. Good point. Yeah. Yeah, it's workable. I do want to explore in television more and seeing your videos on the channel have certainly rekindled that interest for me. Yeah, it, it, it really is cool. And it, it just for me, it is, again, like a slice of my childhood that I somehow just like a, like a, it's like a present that I got 40 years ago and forgot to open. Mm-hmm. And now I'm opening right. it and it's like, oh, it's just <laughs> like the other thing. It's just as cool. So, so John, have you found a particular game that you're like, where's this been my whole life? Or why did I, how did I miss like something that just really just caught your attention? Oh yeah. Thunder Castle is oh, really? phenomenal. Okay. It is so good. And I did a Friday plays on it not too long ago. You can go and look, I'll no, give you a link to yeah, throw absolutely. in the show notes if you want. Uh, and the music chip on the Intellivision on that thing is so good. And it's a lot of bass, whoa, 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 you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> and uh, lots of music in the background where Atari, music on Atari didn't happen that much. That was something they excelled in with the Intellivision. Somehow fewer colors, fewer color palette, I think. Anyway, yeah. Thunder Castle, uh, Beauty and the Beast from a Magic. Another one's really cool. Remember Demon Attack on the Atari? Yeah. Yeah, well, Demon Attack on the Intellivision has a boss level, like at the end of Phoenix with a big giant spaceship you have oh, to nice. defeat. That wasn't any Atari, right? Different stuff and different platforms. So, yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> so have you been playing any Intellivision, Mo, or do you find something else to fill your time? I've been playing, actually going back, to, we talk about old games. Uh, I've yeah. been going back to the game Starfield. It was one put up by Bethesda. It's basically uh, Fallout in space. <laughs> Essentially, is what people call it. was a year or two it. ago, right? Yeah, yeah. it was about a year, yeah. about a year. Um, okay. And I played it, played it through. I enjoyed it, sort of, you know, but, you know, how it is with those games, you kind of stop after a while. Mm-hmm. They came out with an update, I think, because they're coming out with a D- their first DLC is coming out pretty soon. But they came out with an update that really re-sparked my interest back in the game. And I've been playing it again hmm. because and they only added like a couple new features. They added like a um, like a tracker group that you could belong to that's just bounty hunting. And they added some additional like companion people that you could have with you, that kind of stuff. But they added two things that really just changed the game. One, they fixed so many bugs and issues <laughs> with this. <laughs> yeah, you know, like those things that just annoy you. Like you just sort of learn that you just just work through them basically when you play the game. You know, the gameplay itself was just so much smoother than it was before. And the other thing they added is they have now have a creator studio where people can rate their own content for the game on mods that you could download mm. and, and add to yours. And it's funny because like there are some pretty big ones. Like people do like whole missions and stuff. And some of them you have to pay for, but m- most of them are free. And some of the free ones that I've been using were just so convenient because one of the big problems with the game is that you can have somebody travel with you. And the problem is that sometimes you run so far ahead because they sort of lag way behind you mm-hmm. that you're sitting there like wondering where the hell they are. And someone did a mod that basically shortened that distance that they keep to you. That's all it does. Simple. Yeah. It's a small, <laughs> simple thing. Quality of life. Yeah. Change that part of the game. Like, I'm like, oh my God, the person's like, I turn around, they're always like right there, you know, <laughs> and I don't have to worry about them being like some other distance. But I would tell you, just those two things together, and I've been looking at like on Reddit and some other forums, and apparently I'm not alone. Apparently, a lot of people have been re picking up this game and playing again just because of these. Just because they cleaned it up, which is almost like kind of sad because this is really what the game should have been when it was released. Mm. You, know? <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, 
But that feels like that happens more and more in the modern gaming environment, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, it yeah, absolutely I does. I seem to remember, George, didn't you buy and stream Starfield like on day one on Twitch with yeah. us? And yeah, you had yeah. a sub subpar experience. You didn't like it that much. Yeah. Not because the game wasn't good, but because all the glitches and problems. Yeah, it, I, I remember that very first stream. It was like mm-hmm. 15, 20 minutes just to get it to load. I was so embarrassed by it. Yeah, it that's was, right. Yep. It was terrible. It turned out that I, because I was playing the game on a spinning disc versus an Solid SSD. State, yeah. Yeah. yeah, solid state is that like, oh, this is the problem. I'm like, so you didn't expect anybody to install the game on a spinning disc ever as large as it was, really? Or at least give you a warning. Yeah. You know, they could have right. said, hey, yeah. you're putting it on this. You can have subpar experience. No, they didn't, yeah, they didn't bother. So, mm. but again, I think if you haven't played or haven't played for a while, I think it's definitely mm. worth taking a look at it and just playing it again. Okay. I definitely Starfield. will. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, George, do you have something new? <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> okay. No, <laughs> I'm sticking with our theme of old shit. Awesome. So, yeah. <laughs> just like the hosts. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and mine is old in a couple of different ways. So, it's A, an old PC game available in steam but it is comprised of much older arcade games <laughs> that we would play back when we were in arcades back in the 80s or 90s it's called capcom arcade Ooh. stadium now okay okay this is not the only one there's at least one other one because i have two things in my steam list one's called capcom arcade stadium the other one is called capcom arcade second stadium so i'm assuming it's another platform like pinball fx has done multiple times right okay the reason why i'm playing it is because apparently in february of this year i must have bought a humble bundle (laughs) and got all the dlc which is all the individual arcade games Uh into it just like pinball fx you buy the individual pinballs and the platform is free that's what it seems capcom arcade stadium is Mm -hmm. only instead of pinballs it's arcade games made by capcom so the 1940 series 1941 Mm -hmm. 42 so on and so forth um bionic commando uh carrier air wing regular commando full metal madness uh final fight forgotten Mm. worlds all you know ghouls and ghosts i'm just running through the list alphabetically 31 arcade games now wow what's interesting to me in playing this is the user interface so when you guys go to emulate a video game you see the game itself and maybe depending upon you have mame or something else set up you might see the bezels Mm -hmm. right that's pretty standard in emulation Mm -hmm. yeah with capcom arcade stadium you literally walk into an arcade and you're looking at the cabinets so your viewpoint is further back from the screen a little bit you're seeing the joysticks you're seeing the buttons you're seeing the marquee Mm -hmm. and the screen in there i'm sure you can change views i haven't explored it enough yet but just that part of it made me happy i love the fact that you can also change the arcade cabinets in this thing so if right now all the cabinets look like those generic Capcom white, you know, molded arcade cabinets mm-hmm, that you might mm-hmm. remember, but you can change them to what the game actually had, like the ghouls and ghosts, regular arcade mm-hmm. cabinet. Oh, okay. um, and you can, you know, change that for all your games or just one of your games you go and you play. It has some other neat little features. It has save state features. John, I know you love yeah, that. That's great. It has a cheat. rewind feature. <laughs> yeah. If awesome. you're playing More the cheating. game <laughs> and you're messing up, you can rewind and, you you actually get an achievement for it which is really funny (laughs) (laughs) but i don't think i would have bought these dlcs for this if it weren't for the humble bundle deal that i must have gotten sometime in february Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they're normally like let me go look i believe it's something like between one and five dollars for each cabinet oh each game oh yeah yeah like i can see a dollar I can see a dollar. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe two if it's really good. Because you're not going to do many bundles. Yeah. It, mm-hmm. Well, I'm looking at it now. It looks like a $1.99 from mm-hmm. what I'm seeing. They don't seem to do bundles on them. Like you don't get like a 1940s bundle with all those games. That's kind of a shame. Yeah. I'm guessing it's because everything is Capcom. And, you know, if they bundled it, they felt like they couldn't figure out a category other than Capcom. And you got them all anyway. So. So did you have to enter 31 codes from Humble Bundle or did you oh have God, one code yeah. that unlocked everything? I, you know, I honestly don't even remember buying it. Oh, when you did it. You <laughs> so know. Okay. I don't know what I had to do. I'd have to go back and look in February in my Humble Bundle order list and see mm. what it provided me to know that. But I didn't do that for this podcast. I apologize. It was just 
it was really just like i'm like i i want something to play i'm i want to put pinball down for a little mm-hmm. bit but i still want to play something nostalgic <laughs> mm-hmm. and i'm like oh capcom okay let me take a look at this holy crap i have all these games that i can play yeah. now so it was like you john said you know you you forget about this thing for 40 years and then you open it up and it's like a brand new gift to yourself from back then yeah nice. is there anything in there you've been playing or discovered or been going back to again um a final fight yeah. for some reason has my attention <laughs> right now i've just yeah. been playing That's the crap Christ. out of it so uh, i had forgotten how much i enjoyed that game back in the old arcade days so Mm -hmm. yeah especially multiplayer it's even cooler yeah oh yeah i imagine so (laughs) yeah all right stick around we'll be right back Hi, this is comedian and writer, and let's be honest, I do a lot of things. This is Dean Archipotus, the host of Whiskey Business, the podcast not so much about whiskey as it is one with whiskey. Yes, we drink and talk about whiskey, but we do so much more with so many interesting people. For example, we talk to comedians like Greg Warren. You know, I don't want to brag, but let's just say I can walk into a Red Lobster and get whatever. You know, I think the pause right there is probably more important than the word. Amazing athletes like boxing champion Buster Douglas. When a fighter's down and he's looking for his mouthpiece instead of trying to get up. That's when I knew it was over. Yeah, Yeah. right? And yes, Bigfoot chasers. Do you believe in Bigfoot? And if so, does he really eat beef jerky? (laughs) The Bigfoot thing is people have seen these and and I've seen a lot of compelling evidence about it. It's Whiskey Business with Dino Tripodis. Join us for what we call a good conversation with a good pour. You really can't ask for much more than that, can you, people? Check us out at whiskeybusinesspod.com, a proud member of the Evergreen Podcast Network. If you're a diehard Gen X grown-up, you can pledge your support by clicking join on YouTube or by becoming a patron at genxgrownup.com slash Patreon. Another brand eater. Yep. Hope you're hungry. Whoa. Because it takes four bowls of all brand to get the vitamin nutrition in one bowl of Total. He's been brand washed. Total's a good source of brand fiber. Total also has 100% of nine vitamins and iron. It takes four bowls of many brand cereals to get that. You could eat four bowls of fruit and fiber or one bowl of Total. Think you missed the boat, Dad. Total. One bowl. 100%. Before we wind up the show, you know, we always like to take a few minutes here toward the end to talk about the things we're looking at or looking forward to between now and the next time we speak. Uh, and George, we know that you used releases.com to populate mm-hmm. this list. So why don't you tell us what things you are looking forward to? <laughs> well, uh, first off, there's a new Icons Unearthed series coming out, ladies oh, and gentlemen. Right. Nice. July Great. the 10th. They are, are pumping so these things out left, right, and center, which surprises me, considered I know Vice themselves went bankrupt recently. Oh, and did they? Yeah, they've had all kinds of financial problems, huh. but they are pumping these documentaries out. <laughs> this one on July 10th is Icons on Earth, Spider-Man. Oh, that's going to be cool. That's going to be really cool. I'm guessing it's going to center around the movie franchises, but it could also be the animated stuff or the TV shows, because you know they throw all that stuff in there. Oh, yeah. I really, really want to see if they throw that 70s Spider-Man crappy thing in this documentary. That would be awesome. I hope they go from origin of Spider-Man all the way. I want to see everything. That sounds great. That would be so (laughs) great. I think it'll be a lot of fun. I am also looking forward to a video game, thanks to releases.com, which I don't often do. It's called Nobody Wants to Die. Uh, This is going to be released on PC, PS5, and Xbox Series S. It's an immersive, futuristic, uh, 20-world New York Mo. You'll love that part. It's 2329. Uh, You're a detective, so it's very story-driven. There's murder and intrigue and all that. Hmm. Just looks like a lot of fun to me. I probably won't buy it when it first comes out because it feels like it's going to be a triple A title or yeah. something with a like a $65 price tag. But I'll be keeping an eye on it to see when it drops in price and try and snatch it up a little cheaper. I'm going to jump in. Do you know who the publisher is of Nobody Wants to Die? Did you notice? No, I didn't. It's our friends over at Play On. Oh, I might get it for free. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's right. They were the developers, oh. but they are publishing this game. Yeah. That and I feels saw the like a free too. license for us to stream, John. And it looked so good. It looks so good. Mm. I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. When, oh, it's, man, when I saw it on your great. list, I'm like, oh my goodness, this is the same game I wanted to want to play. <laughs> wow. There you go. See, releases.com bringing mm-hmm. gamers together. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Absolutely. 
Now, the thing I'm looking forward to the most, however, between now and the next time, SFG oh, motherfucking E, yeah. here, here July go. 19th <laughs> through July 21st, we are going to be there in full force. And I'm going to break some news that John and Mo aren't even aware of for SFGE, <gasps> ladies Ooh. and gentlemen. Oh, what is it? SFGE, they always do their stuff on an app. So you can go and look at all the upcoming yes. things, you know, the schedule and all like that. Mm -hmm, it's called mm -hmm. YAPP, Y-A-P-P. -P, and then you just select SFGE 2024. If you had it for last year, it automatically updates to the new one. So that's great. At 8.30 p.m. on Friday, July 19th in room 102 of the Cobb Galleria, the Gen X Grown Up Meetup will take place, ladies oh, good. and gentlemen. We're able to get a room. Oh, good. I didn't even ask. They oh, really? just you did it. Ask. I never got a chance to send the email to request it. They put it in for us. That's how wonderful the guys at SFGE are. They treat us so well. Yeah. Our guests had a lot of fun last year. We did pizza and we had like a little live thing going on and mm -hmm. we just talked about stuff. It was almost like a interactive podcast session. It kind was of, a yep. lot of fun yep. throughout the whole weekend. We spent time with all of our fans. We played games, board games, video games. We went to wrestling events with each other. It was just a lot of fun. So if you're anywhere in the Southeast, July 19th through the 21st, get your ass to Atlanta, <laughs> buy a ticket, and come see Gen X Grown Up at the Southern Fried Gaming Expo. Mm -hmm. and if you pre-order, you can use the code Gen X Grown Up to save five bucks, too. Mm -hmm. How about that? Oh, look, look at that. my man throwing the business chops in there. Love see that. There? <laughs> there you go. John can do a promo. <laughs> Speaking right. of John, are you looking forward to anything? Well, SFGE, of course, just sure. like you. We look forward to this all year round. I start looking forward to SFGE on the Monday after SFGE the previous year. <laughs> it's, just, it's always <laughs> over too Packing quickly. up in the hotel room, right? Yeah, it's like, oh, it was over. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Um, also, uh, already released, but on July 1st on Netflix, the entire second season of Star Trek Prodigy was released. Mm. Now, you'll remember yep. that Paramount Plus canceled Prodigy. Right. But the second season was still in development, and Netflix picked it up to finish it and release it. Oh, so, good. I've not watched happened. any of it yet, but it's 20 episodes. It's a huge wow. season. And I understand there's a bunch of cool new cameos that it's hard to avoid because of my news feed. I haven't watched a single frame of it yet, but I'm looking forward to binging the second season of Star Trek Prodigy. Nice. The thing I'm most looking forward to is a horror movie called Long Legs. You mm -hmm. guys heard of this at all? No. Mm -mm. So apparently Nicolas Cage is a serial killer. Oh, not, not, not a leap. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, leap. is that, is this a documentary? <laughs> yeah, no, it's not. No, it is not. Uh, it's all about an FBI agent trying to track down a serial killer. It releases July 12th in theaters. At the moment, it has 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Wow. Really? People are saying it is a masterpiece. It's spectacular. It's the best FBI serial killer thing since the Silence of the Lambs. People are absolutely wow. head wow. over heels okay. about this movie. Interesting. If you watch a trailer, I would say don't watch a trailer because the trailers first are pretty random and it's hard to figure out what's going on on purpose. But if you watch a trailer, you'll see just how mind fucky this whole world <laughs> seems to be. And, uh, and as a bonus, this is something my daughter is looking forward to. We're going to meet midway between where we live down in Daytona Beach, about an hour and a half from both of us. We're going to watch this together when it releases early on July 11th. I am stoked about this movie. Wow. People are people are like they say the most frightened they've been in a the theater in forever. The huh. best horror movie they've seen in a while. So, yeah, long legs. Uh, All right. I don't, I don't know what that's got to do with it. I think it's like Zodiac. Like that's how he signs his, you know, his letters. Mm. He's, his long legs is his, his uh, pseudonym he uses. So anyway, okay. uh, that's what I'm looking forward to a bunch. How about you, Mo? What do you got coming? Uh, well, first off, SFGE, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. That goes without saying. Yeah. Um, and next to our actually a couple TV series. Uh, one is Presumed Innocent. Uh, you remember the movie Harrison Ford way back oh, when? Sure. Well, apparently it was based on a novel, and they're doing a series based on a short, a mini series with Jack Gyllenhaal playing the main guy, and it's doing like the entire book, like because the movie obviously abridged and skipped a lot of parts and took a lot of artistic license. This is like supposed to be like very in depth. All the reviews say this is like great show, like edge on your seat, trying to figure out what's going mm -hmm. on. Uh, even knowing the surprise ending from the movie, I 
assuming that they probably gonna have to change that particular piece uh, <laughs> you know for this show but um again just looking forward to it uh the next thing i'm looking forward to uh actually dropped already i think at the end like 626 on hulu is the show the bear season three they dropped oh, the entire yeah. series yeah. Ama- i love that show i love that show so much i don't know why <laughs> i just do and so it's definitely a season they say drop the whole thing it's definitely gonna be a binge weekend watch sort of thing for me but so uh that's definitely what i'm looking forward to but along with that many of you know that we answer questions from our patrons every mm-hmm. week on our podcast again it's super easy if you guys want to drop us a question all you have to do is become a patron on patreon.com slash gen x grown up for mm-hmm. even a dollar a month we will field your questions and answer them here on our show and this week's question coincidentally is from brandon who you read his email our from fourth the listener. Wow. wow that was oh, we did not up. consult on this it was just coincidence no. that this sort of happened no. Um, yeah. So here's this question for this week. If a Gen X gallery or museum ever opened and the three mm. of you were asked to contribute a beloved item, which mm. item would each of you donate? So I'm assuming it's like we're probably like dying or dead or something. So we don't mind <laughs> giving this away at this point. So, yeah. um, so uh, uh, and you guys have an idea what you would give? Mine's easy. I can oh, jump right in. Okay, go for it's it. It's really easy. It's it's probably the single most valuable item and also the thing I would not donate if I was still alive. So right. to, to meet your criteria... It's got to be that that Alamogordo ET cartridge that I framed. Ooh, that's that very. I have. It's from that burial eighty three yeah. that was an urban legend forever, and then it was you know everybody verified it was accurate. Then they dug it up and look. I have one in my house. There's one in the Smithsonian. I mean, that's how <laughs> that's that's how integral that is to our Gen X and gaming history, especially. So yeah, I would I would donate that, and I want a giant plaque and a picture of me going. Hey, so they know <laughs> who came from, but that's what awesome. I was do. <laughs> How about you, George? You know what you would donate? Um, well, other than my middle finger, because I don't want to give up any of my shit. But you're dead, remember? You're, you're, um, yeah, you won't yeah, need that middle finger. I know, but I still, off. I'm, I'm going to take stuff to the grave with me. Uh, <laughs> bury it with me. Probably my first five issues of my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle comic Oh, Ooh, good one. Go. Um, That's a good one. Yeah, they were the original magazine size before they shrunk down mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. the uh, the regular comic book size with issue six. Uh, the only sad part would be, and I've told this story to other people before, my original 1B version of the first book I don't mm-hmm. have because it was stolen from me in middle school, but I do have a 1D version that I acquired years later, which is like a fourth printing of that same book. I would I would donate those specifically because I just recently sent them off to get them uh, signed at a comic book grading company oh, um, nice. by Eastman. Oh, really nice. So, wow. Yeah. It, I think they would hold some significance to our culture from that time period, yep. as well as like John's talking about being a valuable asset that mm-hmm. the museum would mm-hmm. probably uh, enjoy holding onto and displaying. That's very cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mine was also pretty much a no brainer. It'd be, a collection of books, the three first D and D books, the Monster Manual oh, Player's Guide great. and the Dungeon Master's Guide. Great pick! That's awesome yep. because yep. that was again. It's uh, one everybody I knew had those three books. You know, as far as who played Dungeons Dragons, you had those three books. They were like mm-hmm. the ones that you had to have to to be a serious player. And uh, <laughs> also, again, I think it just it just speaks to the time, yep. and I think it also has a relevance today because the game is still going strong. You know, it's it's right. changed with the times, and you kind of see where it came from. So that would be my my contribution to this museum. So again, and for all the people listening to the show, let us know what you would contribute. I'm really curious to hear either mm, on our Discord channel yeah. or on our Patreon message board as well. There's a place there where you can put messages to us. And again, mm-hmm. if you want to post a question here, just go to jendiscrope.com slash Patreon. Join for as little as a dollar a month and we'll take a look at your questions and try to answer them right here on the show. Mm-hmm. And you know, speaking of Patreon, periodically, well, every episode we talk about someone new, we always have so many new people coming in regularly. We thank you for that. You know, every once in a while we get an upgrade. I think last time we spoke, we talked about Kat gave us a little upgrade. She yeah, gave us a yeah. raise. Uh, so since May, longtime supporter Tony Rio. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. So we're we're Ooh. talking about Fat Tony over on the yeah. Discord He's server. He's a delight. He's yes. a delight. He certainly is. He is a delight. His, his username. I'm gonna make sure I plug him here. Tony Rio, Crate Diggers Music and More. He recently opened up his own record store in his hometown. Right. Yeah, um, yeah. And I Good guess it's him. going well because back in May he gave us a huge upgrade from the level he was at to a hundred dollars a month. Wow! Oh, wow! That's wow! Thank so, you. 
That's crazy. I'm happy your record store is doing well yeah, and you're able really? to support yeah. us in the way that you wanted write to. Write it off We're... as a business expense, Tony. I'll help there you, you with go. that. There you go. Yeah. We'll, we'll plug Put your right thing in here. The title. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, thank you so much. I mean, th- that is, we talk about every dollar helps. This really helps. I mean, that yeah. pays a couple of bills a month for us. That yeah. is a serious contribution to really keep us going. And it's amazing. your commitment to us and your support of us and your kindness toward us has never gone unnoticed, but it's refreshed again today as we talk about your generosity and upgrading us here. We love you for that. We love all of our supporters over on Patreon. If you would like to join Tony at the same level or a lower one, as little as a dollar <laughs> a month, it's really easy. Just head over, as Mo said, to Patreon dot com slash gen x grown up fill out a few things set up a pledge and you're off to the races we'll talk about you here on the show all right that is going to wrap it up for this edition of the show don't worry though we'll be back in two weeks with another one but next week that's our backtrack where we pick a single nostalgic topic to dig in deep we have a pretty timely one too george you want to tell the fourth listener what's coming their way next week absolutely we are definitely heading back to 80s movie theaters driving over in our new car we're going to pull some bananas out of our tailpipe and head to <laughs> beverly hills and watch an eddie murphy classic beverly hills cop because mm-hmm. not only is it like 40 years old or That's something right. like this at this point 42 i guess or whatever uh there's also a new beverly hills cop axel f yeah. film yep, just dropped. hitting That's theaters right. and netflix this month everybody's been looking forward to the reviews that people are talking about sound like this is actually going to be good which is a surprising (laughs) thing for such an old redo or fourth film in the franchise because the third one was awful yeah it was but that first one was comedy classic gold it was really if you love 80s comedy films and you haven't seen beverly hills cop you absolutely have to join us so you can get enticed to head to Beverly Hills with Axel Foley, <laughs> Taggart, and Rosewood and join the crew. It's going to be a blast. Yeah, that's coming your way next week. You don't want to miss that one. Until then, I'm John. George, thank you so much for being here. Yes, sir. Mo, you know I appreciate you, man. Always fun, man. Fourth listener, you're the one we all appreciate most of all, though. We cannot wait to talk to you again next time. Bye-bye. See you guys. Take care, everybody. No life, no fun. Don't you know that you're a grown up? Gen X Grown Up is a member of the Evergreen Podcast family. Learn more at evergreenpodcasts.com. Okay. <clears throat> 173. Let's just try this. We'll go in. Five, four, three. Welcome back, Gen X Grown Up Podcast listeners, to this, the episode. This, the episode? This, the episode. One more time in five. Hello, and welcome to Novel Conversations, a podcast about the world's greatest stories. I'm your host, Frank Lavallo. And for each episode of Novel Conversations, I talk to two readers about one book. And together, we summarize the story for you. We introduce you to the characters, we tell you what happens to them, and we read from the book along the way. So if you love hearing a good story, you're in the right place. Our ninth season is coming this fall. Tune in to hear from some of the all-time great authors, Charles Dickens, Jules Verne, F. Scott Fitzgerald, and more. Subscribe to Novel Conversations wherever you listen to podcasts.